So today I am sharing with you a project that I did with my stencils from Stencil Girl. And this is one of the projects. This is a checkbook cover. And I don't know how many people, you know, after I created it, I started thinking, how many people even use checkbook covers anymore? If everybody does online banking, but I thought it was pretty cool. And I thought, okay, so if people don't use checkbook covers anymore, this same checkbook cover could be used for post-it notes. So you could throw that in your purse so that you always have um, some notes with you. Or the same technique I'm doing could be used for the covers of the inserts for your pocket journals. So like I created this one a few weeks ago for you guys. And I took one of the inserts out and I created a cover. So I think I'll make a cover for each of these. And then all I have to do is change out my papers. So. What I wanted to show you first was, these are some of the stencils I used today, and they are sticky. And the reason they're sticky is, I have a product called Stencil Tack with Ursa finishes. And sometimes I want my stencils to stay exactly where I place them. I don't want them moving around and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this with your stencils. I'm going to put down a craft sheet to protect my work surface. And I'm going to show you on this stencil right here. This is a four inch stencil that I did with Stencil Girl. And I usually take the cover off just because it's easier for me. And I have had this bottle for a long time, and a little goes a long ways. I mean, you don't need a lot. And you just take a throwaway paintbrush, or you can take a dauber or a makeup sponge, and you just apply this onto the backside, whatever you think would be the backside of your stencil. There is writing on the front side that... Um, has the name of the stencil on it. So I just apply this and it comes out white, but it dries clear. And it doesn't take that long, depending upon how thick you applied it, for this to go clear and be ready to use. Then I'll just take this and I'll move it to a, an area to dry. And then I would take a baby wipe, of course, and wipe this excess off. And once you do that, this stays on for a long time. I mean, you can reuse it. The tackiness eventually will go away. But you can use it to place your stencils down and it's not going to move. It's, it's going to stay there. But what's really cool about it is it's non-toxic. And when the stickiness goes away, you can just give it an earthen coat. But it 
keeps all of these little areas of the stencil exactly where you want them so you get those nice crisp lines. So that's what I'm using today. And the first project I'm going to show you, not that I'm going to complete all of these projects, but I wanted to show you, I have, I purchased these checkbook covers a long time ago. I mean, I have had these in my stash forever. They're just blank checkbook and coupon savers, okay? So it comes with four pieces of cardstock that fits into the plastic checkbook cover. And you could decorate this this white piece like I did on this one. I used um, I used a stencil, but I also for this one I just cut a piece of heavyweight black cardstock, the in the size of this white cardstock for my insert, and. I made the crease lines just like it was on the white piece. And I used one of my six inch stencils. And some of these are very cool in that you can do a design and line it up exact to have a complete pattern without skipping going all the way across. You can do that with the linked fence and the mermaid. The tries, you, you can't get that continuous pattern, but you can stop it where you want and realign it. And the circles too, you can't get that continuous pattern but you can with this one. So just know what you're looking for. And when I do this, I like to place this down and rub it. Now I know by the writing on the, on the stencil here that this is the right way. And then I do take just a tiny bit of purple tape to hold my paper or cardstock in place. Now for this one, I'm gonna use some of my iridescence. That's what I did on here. I used three colors of the iridescence. And I love how that turned out. So I'm gonna take the sapphire, which you can tell has been used a lot. I love that one. I'm going to take the Lagoon and I think I'll take the Emerald. So for these I'm going to take three fresh daubers. You can use makeup sponges, whatever you have on hand that's going to give you just a little bit like I take and put the excess off and then I'll start anywhere and I'll just start applying this right into the area where I want this color. These dry pretty quickly and they will blend. I don't want to go all the way to where this this line is because you don't want a stark line. I almost made that mistake. You don't want a real stark line. So I'm trying to avoid that. Get some of the sapphire. And on black, these all kind of look similar, but when you're close up and in person, you can really tell 
the difference in the colors. And I'm just doing these and I'm blending that sapphire right into that lagoon. And you just want to continue this all the way across. It doesn't take long and there's you don't have to use iridescence. There's so many things you can use to have that beautiful color. Now I'm going to take some of the emerald and I'm going to avoid going all the way up to the top to prevent that sharp line also. And You'll see this maybe a little bit easier when I'm doing it on a white background than on the black. I'll, let, I'll look in just a second. I'm going to take this off of here. So this will, you'll hear the peeling. But you can definitely see where that pattern is and that beautiful color. So I love the way the iridescents look on black. But what's really cool about this linked fence stencil is you're able to realign it to complete this pattern all the way across. You can see exactly where this was and put it back down, okay? Now right here, I don't have to worry, I can go completely off the edge because I don't have that sharp edge right there. I'm gonna continue with some of the emerald right here. I like when there are patterns that you can repeat all the way across and it's a continuous pattern. These iridescents show up so beautifully on the black. They show up nice on the white too, but I'm really partial to the black. Okay, grab some of the sapphire. I'm not gonna go all the way up to that top edge because I don't want that crisp, crisp line, like I said. But isn't that stunning? So what I would do is I would realign this. And continue and finish this piece off. And that's what I did for the black checkbook cover. Before I touch it, I'm going to wipe my hands because they are messy. Although... Messy is good when you're crafting, right? So that's what I did. Although with this one, I used I used the lagoon, I used the copper, if you can see it, and I used the lilac. So this gives you a totally different look. And then I took a die cut that I had. I always have a stash of dies that I have extra from working on projects and this was perfect to just do the initial so when I did the initial I also went around the delicate lacy part of this die with the copper and then I glued it to the front and inserted it in for the checkbook cover now if you can um you can still find these. I know I saw them. I don't remember where I saw it, if it was at a big box store or one of the um, smaller independents. But I did see some of these recently um, at the beginning of the year, I think. And I thought, oh, I really need to get mine out and start using them because I have them in the checkbook cover size and also the credit card size so it comes in two sizes 
but to put them into this plastic part, you have to actually have this one right here so I can show you. You actually, your design is on this side and you fold it, the design to itself and you fold this checkbook cover in half and you insert it backwards of what you think you would once your project is dry. So you would wait until this was thoroughly dry, but it makes a great checkbook cover and you can't tell that this is just cardstock in here. So I like how that looked. You could even look on Amazon and see if you could find them there. But I, after I made it, I started thinking and thought, oh my goodness, I bet there are people that don't even carry a checkbook anymore. Because so many places do not take checks. They only take debit cards or credit cards or cash. So I thought, okay, let's do something else with it. So I created this one, and on this one, I used the actual insert. So I used the, the insert, and I used, again, one of my stencils, the linked fence that I just showed you, and I used some Gina K ink. So again, I did the same thing. I'm going to start this one and show you. For this one, I'll use the mermaid. And I just lined it up and stuck it on here. So because it has that stencil tack on it, it's not going to move. It's not going to shift. And you can see it stays on. But I do like to take just a little bit of that purple tape to hold the whole thing in place. And for this, I did take a dauber. And you can use the iridescence. You can use whatever you want. This was, um, I figured more people had ink. You could use it for mini photo album. Yeah, that's a great idea, Lisa. And it, they would make nice gifts, Denise. So you can take this, and I like to go off just a little bit and then start because it's going to be darker. But I like that you can get the different colors by going around. So to me, it's amazing that it starts out with just that deep, dark blue. Let me move that up so you can see. So it starts out with that deep, dark blue, but it's that lighter, almost aqua all around it. Um, this time I did not dab off, and so I have a bright blue spot right there. But that's what... I did for this one. I just took, and that's where you get all those molted colors and those variations. So that's another way to, to do it. I'm going to also take a little piece right here, right up here. I'm going to show you what it looks like with, um, just a little bit of the iridescence. This is the lagoon. Just so you can see the difference of this on the white compared to the black. It's still shimmery and shiny and beautiful. It just gives you a completely different look. And you don't have to use this stencil tack to hold your stencil in place. I find it easier unless I'm doing a mixed media project, I find it easier to hold my stencil in place. Okay, so I'm gonna see if you can see 
I'm going to take this off so you can still see that shimmer and shine of the iridescence. This is the, the ink, which gives you that great variation in color. But the iridescence, even on the white, is stunning. I like it on the black better, honestly. Thank you, Denise. I love the shimmer too. It is just stunning. And even on the white, you can see that shimmer and shine. So what I did was, and I'm setting this aside, I can always finish it later because I can put this exactly where I want it because this pattern is exactly the same. So I'll have that continuous pattern all the way across. So I wanted to show you for this one, I took, again, I went to my little stash of all my pre-cut die, die cut items and I grabbed a little stitch scallop piece and I applied the ink directly to it. And then I just took, I've had these stamps forever. It is a little kit of just words and they're pre-inked. And I just took that and stamped out, imagine, inspire, believe. Because I thought I love words that have meaning and I thought that looked good. And I glued that on, but then I thought instead of a checkbook cover, I did take another one of my pre-cut stitched scallop rectangles and some Velcro has um, mini dots. So I attached that so I have, so this closes. And then inside I put two post-it notes. So I have this attached, this attached under the post-it notes and I attached two post-it notes. There would be room even, depending upon how, how you put this. If you put this all the way on the edge, you could stick a pen right inside there. You have room to, to stick a pen, so you always have a pen handy, and you could throw this in your purse. And then I started thinking, okay, what if you wanted to use this for your pocket journals, which I have right here. We could use it for the inserts. So same thing. You just, what I did was I actually measured the size of my paper for my inserts. And I went about a fourth of an inch larger all the way around. Well, a fourth of an inch, so it's an eighth of an inch all the way around, so that it gave it a cover. And then you could take, I know that Eileen sometimes will take and just staple this so it stays together. And then you have definite little inserts that you can put in and out of your pocket journals or any of the journals that you use. But I thought this is so much prettier to have, I'll do inserts for, for each of these pages, groups of pages. I hope you enjoyed today's project. It was simple, but with a lot of variations. And I think this is one that I will throw in my purse often because Honestly, while I keep a checkbook, I never carry a checkbook with me. This one will stay in my desk drawer where I keep them. But I love the new checkbook cover that I created. But this one can go easily into my purse for note taking. And I hope that you liked today's video. And remember to always be creative. So... Have fun and be creative. I will see you next week. Bye, everyone.